Hello and welcome to this Mobilytics video that will explain to you how to make the best champion pool for Season 10. The key point to note is that almost all challenges first got to that peak rank and still get there actually by maining 3 champions accounting for approximately 75% of their games. All these players have a good meta champion pool and they stick to it. Obviously there are one tricks and people have some niche things and we will talk about that. We're going to look at how these players essentially craft their champion pool and use it to reach challenger and then we're going to show you how to do that for yourselves, maybe not to reach Challenger, but to at least reach the goal you want in Season 10. I'm Vrakayu and I'm a Master Tier Jungle Main YouTuber, so I've had some practice with this myself. Now every role, champion, playstyle has a differing approach, but the thing they most have in common is the amount of champions that they utilize to great effectiveness in order to basically beat 99.9% .9 of other players. Now within this one role that they use to climb, they have a main champion, a second main champion, as well as a spare one. Given that you can have bans against your variety of situations in champion select, you want to be able to adapt your pick to make sure you have the best chance of winning. At the same time, certain picks that you have will be better in certain metas than others. Obviously, multi-season challenger players normally sit around 50% of their games on their three main champions. They do like to try meta champions situationally, the OP picks, and this is why it doesn't really apply to pro plays as much because they are the best of the best, and it is literally their job to practice whatever champions are the most meta at that stage. You'll notice in pro play, you might have a Sejuani, Rek'Sai, Jarvan meta like we used to, and all pro players, junglers specifically, will be required to understand them and know how to play them. When that shifts to a different three champions, they will have to do that also. The important thing to note about this is when you reach Master Plus, you make that run in Grandmaster, you get Challenger, the meta has a much bigger impact. Player strength is closer, player ability is more marginal, so champion strength will make a greater difference. I might have fun playing Zyra Jungle and Platinum and Low Diamond, but as soon as I want to play in Master Tier, I can't really do that. Therefore, players at the top of the ladder have their champion pools evolve every season and throughout the season as well. However, many Challenger players you currently know that are even studying an Academy, they're playing in Twitch Rivals, you're seeing their champion Champion pool has evolved from what it first was, and not to make the transition too obvious, but Cat Evolved is one of those players, known to be a Katarina one trick, now is playing an Academy, Revenge is the same case with his one trick, Riven now plays a whole bunch of stuff, in addition to BMD playing Darius. So while three champions in your pool seems to be the sweet spot for most players, there are these one tricks, as I just mentioned, that used a very small champion pool relying on one champion in order to get their climb to the high elos, and once they reach that, they then spread out and diversify. So why is it important to have a champion wall? How does it help you climb up the ladder to whatever your goals might be, specifically reaching those diamond master tier challenger elos? And this is a core learning principle. Once you have mastered how to play a champion, you are not focusing anymore on how to play the champion. You're only focusing on the game League of Legends. This is very good for jungle players. It's why we say learn Warwick, learn Amumu, learn simple champions while you're actually learning about the jungle, how to watch the mini map, how to transition, gank, secure objectives. There's so many layers in jungling the last thing you want to be doing is focusing on what Lee Sin does, you know, how to do an insect, when instead you should actually just be focusing on how you path to the gank in the first place in a way that gives you the best chance for success. This means that muscle memory that you have for those quick one-trick champions that you are spamming gives you a quicker opportunity at learning about the game. Now, to extend on this thought process, it's obviously better to have champions that can apply to a variety of situations. The downsides to this is that you can get bored, especially if you're a one-trick, what happens if your champion becomes super weak, you no longer have the impact that you once did, you're having less fun, you can get tilted, frustrated more easily, and then your progress gets hindered. And this is why we suggest having those three champions, at least to diversify. You can spam different ones at different times depending on their relative strength to the meta. Now when you watch coaches, you watch the Mobilitic stream, people look at player profile reviews. What's one of the most common things that have been said? One, you need to play the game more. You know, you have 50 to 100 games in a season, that's really not a lot. But mostly, they'll have 50 games played and there's like 25 different champions. That is not good. Imagine the first time you're climbing, you're trying to catch up, right? When you get to diamond, gold, plat, doesn't matter, you're likely against players who have been there for a while. The memes of, hey, well, you have 500 games in gold 3, I just got here, don't really make sense because the guy in gold 3 has sustained himself. He's proven that he belongs. Now you have to prove that you belong and if you are better, you will climb. So in theory, you have to catch up with that experience, games played, and knowledge. It's really hard to do that when you're spreading yourself across champions as well as roles. And that's something we really didn't mention yet. You also need to have those three champions and your two roles. Because we have to queue up with two, it's very good to spam queue up with those two at all time. For example, I will always pick jungle and support. People can make jokes about that, 
but back when a lot of us started playing, we didn't have a fancy champion select and so we found ourselves filling just to make sure the team was in a good mood by the time you got into a game. And so having those roles and champions at a very high level every time you rank up means there is just less catch up time. Now people at the top of the ladder will play thousands of games of League a season. Some people have jobs, schools, university, girlfriends, boyfriends, wives, husbands, dogs, cats, stuffed animals. And you don't really have the luxury of playing 100 games of Rengar just to begin to understand him and then play another thousand, you know, to get to Diamond 1 Master. And that's why we say know the two roles you want to play and when you queue up, when you get into lobby, you have three for each of those roles that you will play no matter what. You need to have what we call deliberate practice where you're focusing on the task at hand, you're not distracted and you have a distinct moment of time where your goal is to improve. And last up, and the most important reason why people do this thing, is that most others will main a champion or two and get really good at those as well. If you're just okay at say 5 champions or okay at 10 champions, but the laner you're against is a 1 trick Riven or a 2 trick Riven and Darius, then your okay champions will lose to their great champions because they know the ins and outs of Riven. They know every single matchup they could face, they know every weakness about their champion and about your champion. If you are only okay at your 9th best Shen, she's probably going to beat you in lane and in turn win the game. The game is competitive, that's the reality. If you want to climb and improve, this is what others do and we have to keep up. Also, it's good to look at those who've reached the promised land so we can learn from how they did it and spread the knowledge throughout the player base. We all improve together. So with the context of why this is important and how you can use it to climb and get better at the game, let's look together how we can construct a champion pool for you that lets you reach the goals you have for season 10. Maybe you want gold for the first time, finally you want to reach the diamond land, or maybe you're sick of being diamond and you want to grind it out and reach Mercer tier. And hey, maybe some of you will actually reach challenger. So which type of champion pool do you need? What type of player are you? Do you want to be a one trick who can take that champion and put them in any role? Do you want to play meta champions in a specific role? Maybe you just love the jungle, but whatever strong you're gonna play it. If it's Kha'Zix, Hecarim, you're only gonna play Kha'Zix and Hecarim. Maybe you have a main role like mid lane, you don't want to one trick, you don't wanna play meta, but you wanna have a designated set of champions that you can use throughout the season. And as all good scientists will do, let's throw some definitions at the words we just listed. One trick means one champion. Usually you take them into one role, but you can expand. Any scenario, any meta. Meta picks will mean to play what is ever on the Mobilitics tier lists in the S tier. This will change more from patch to patch, and could even be extreme when Riot makes big changes. Now, if you want to main a role, three champions or more in that one role, fewer champions is what you will play, which is the most common, but then we have those that just get bored of everything, they are jack of all trades, and they play everything. This really isn't ideal when you are learning the game, it makes sense later on once you have played at the higher tiers for a long period of time and you have a huge amount of experience, but when you're beginning, it's really not the best way. Now the pros of a one trick, as we just mentioned earlier, is that you will have expert knowledge of a one champion in all scenarios. If I use myself as an example, I am definitely not a one trick type player, but I do spam a champion that would seem like I'm a one trick. And over the years and seasons, I basically just add those to my champion pool. I probably have 10 champions that I have quote unquote one trick at one time or another. For example, every season I will have those three champions that I play the most for jungle. Even if it's off meta, that champion then gets added to my extended champion pool that I can switch in and out depending on whatever the game state is. For example, in season 7, I learned Orn, spammed him jungle, he's my favorite champion. Evelyn reworked and Warwick reworked. Those three then got added to my champion pool and now I can pull them out whenever, but for a whole season, those were my three rotations. Back in season six, I did this with Kindred, Echo and Rek'Sai. And guess what? Echo and Rek'Sai came back with a vengeance this year. All I had to do was warm up a bit and I was ready to go. So the lesson from what I just told you is when you have a main role and you essentially spam the three champions in that role, it gives you the best versatility from season to season. If I only played Orn and did nothing else, I'd be very limited when he was in a weak state. I'd be very limited if he was banned or if there's a hard counter I couldn't play against. But therein is the important context of one tricking. Don't one trick on jungle. You want to one trick something in a role that it is very strong. Taking Riven into the top lane, great. One tricking Lee Sin and Rengar in the jungle, very good choices. You will become expert junglers and expert at the meta transcending champions. However, you'd be very limited from season to season when you could only play that one champion if it was banned against you and so on. If you want to play meta, this is the best way to climb quickly. Why? Well, what's strong at the moment? Let's see. Definitely Echo, definitely Olaf, and definitely Warwick to most MMRs. So let's say those are the three best meta champions. You will learn and you will play those. Next patch, maybe Kha'Zix, Rengar, and Lee Sin are the strongest. You will switch and you will play those champions. It will require you to adapt better, 
It's the most fun, but it's the most difficult to maintain because you really have to have a skill of picking up champions quickly and not losing too much elo in the process. And therein is the caveat of picking meta champions. If you cannot adapt and play them properly, you will end up losing a lot of LP. Whereas if you main the role or you one trick, you're not really at that risk. Now, let's build our champion pool. The moment you've all been waiting for, the video has led up to this moment. Firstly, firstly, you must pick what you do enjoy. Too many times streamers will meme and just say play whatever's the best. That's not really what you do. You need to pick a champion you identify with. Let's see if we can test our editor here. Consider what types of champs you do like. What style? Do you like assassins? Of course you all like assassins. Tanks, mages, ADCs, fighters. Do you love CC? Do you hate CC? Do you like kiting? Do you hate kiting? Do you want to be a team fighting god? Or do you want to flank? Do you want to split push? Do you hate split pushing? That was a lot of questions, but you do have to consider what champion you like and what playstyle he falls into. And of course, I'm assuming a lot of you know your role, but you do need to consider what type of roles you want to do. Do you like trading in lanes and having a mind battle, always having 1v1s? Maybe you go top lane. Do you like controlling the map, ganking lanes, and helping secure objectives? Then jungle's probably good for you. Maybe your mechanics aren't as good for those dynamic short-range mid lanes. All these things factor in your decision. And finally, you need to consider transfer of skills between those champions and roles. The reason I pick jungle and support is because I love having map control. I love vision, I love enabling my teammates, I love being the reason we win the game even though no one's gonna thank you for it. Support has a lot of that in common. I love to push and roam as a support and get vision for my jungler, roam with them and affect other lanes also. So let's take this through a test scenario. What do you enjoy? Let's say for argument's sake you enjoy playing Olaf. You just started playing, you had a lot of fun, you know, getting in people's faces, skirmishing with them. You loved his healing, you loved to sustain. Great, you have the versatility of tank versus damage. What other champions can satisfy that fantasy? And this is where you can use Mobalytics to go find out similarities between champions and things that you do enjoy. But in this case, I can tell you off the hand, Warwick is actually quite similar. He has built in sustain, a lot of focus on auto attacks, a few spells that are very powerful, and a great skirmisher. So let's go ahead and add him to our champion pool. They're both good at ganking and they're decent at farming. They also can solo objectives. So there's a lot of similarity. What we wouldn't want to do, for example, as our third pick is go ahead and pick Karthus. That's a farm jungler. It requires a different sort of macro sense with his ultimate. And you don't really have the same in your face style. Now, it can be very good to learn something very different as a third pick, as an alternative. And as I said, at one point, it was Orn, Warwick and Evelyn. Those are very different picks. One's a tank, one's a fighter like Warwick, as we just said and one is an assassin like Evelyn. These are fundamentally different playstyles that I picked up over time. I didn't start off by picking all three different classes. It's something I've learned. So the best thing to do is to pick things that have that transfer of skills we talked about, that have a similar scaling. They're both early game Warwick and Olaf. They both like to team fight very well in that mid game. They want to secure the objectives, they want to gank, and they don't want the game to go too late. That means if someone picks Warwick or Olaf, you can pick the other. Now that being said, having played both of those champions, you now have a Warwick Olaf champion pool. You would know that Warwick doesn't fare as well into Olaf as you would with other champions, but because you know both champions so well, you can navigate the matchup appropriately. So ultimately, what does a champion pool look like? Main role, you definitely have three champions. Your off role, you should at least have two. I do say three, but two is a solid. For my support, Zyra Velkaz. This goes for meta champions, this goes if you're maining a role, it doesn't matter. Obviously one trick, you know, you, you pick one champion that you love. You pick their aesthetic, their kit, something about it resonates with you from the lore, and basically there's no scenario where you don't play them. And the final thing is no matter what, make sure you are evaluating your progress properly. If you are stuck, you're not ranking up anymore, Maybe it's time for a change. You need to evaluate your pool and adapt over time. If your win rate over a large sample size is less than 50%, maybe it's time to be honest with yourself. Yes, you should have fun, but if you're playing ranked, you probably do want to win at the same time. So it's best to find a balance where you can do both of those things. All right, I know that was a lot of principles to deal with, a lot of examples and terms we threw at you. It can kind of seem a bit overwhelming, but hopefully we gave you a good picture of the different philosophies, what's good and bad about them, along with a few core examples. There will be a link in the description to a nice infographic Mobilytics has made in the past that will help you refine and choose your champion pool and roles if you want a bit more of a helping hand in this process. Let us know in the comments what you plan on doing this season. Do you plan on playing the meta, meaning a role in picking three champions? Maybe you want to be a dirty one trick. Let us know. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you were able to enjoy this video. Please do like, share, comment, and subscribe if you did. I've been Vakayu, and I will see you all in the next video.